Yo, and what is going on YouTube, and welcome back for another Oathbreaker deck tech. Now, if you guys are interested in the Oathbreaker format, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you have not already. If you're interested in Magic Kids, the official charity of the Oathbreaker team, make sure to check out those links in the description below. Now, before we get into this video, guys, I do want to announce the return of the Battle Series. Now, uh, it took a little bit of coordinating, but it sounds like next week we are going to be able to get up at least one gameplay video for you, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But guys, let's jump right on into this video. Now, first off, my Oathbreaker of choice for today is going to be Soren, Vengeful Blood Lord, paired with his signature spell of Second Sunrise. Now, Soren enters the battlefield for two white-black with four loyalty and the following abilities. Now, a static ability reads, on our turn, creatures and planeswalkers we control have lifelink. His plus two, Soren deals one damage to target player or planeswalker. His minus eight returns target creature card with converted mana cost X from our graveyard to the battlefield. And it's a vampire in addition to its other type. Now, his signature spell, an instant for one white-white, is each player returns to play all artifact, creature, enchantment, and land cards that were put into his or her graveyard from play this turn. Now, since we're running an Aristocrats deck, this is going to be an, a perfect enabler for our deck. Um, but guys, we have a lot to talk about with this deck, but let's just jump right on into it. Now, the first, since this is going to be Aristocrats, I feel we need to look at our sack outlets. And let's just jump right into them. Um, in the early turns, we're really hoping to get uh, some creatures like Viscera Seer, the Blood Soaked Champion, Blood Thrones Vampire, Pitiless Pontiff, uh, Cartel Aristocrat, um, and the Priest of the Forgotten Gods, just so we have some viable sack outlets to really start generating some value. Um, now, a little later in the game, we have some creatures that are also going to serve as sack outlets, but we kind of want them to be game changers for us. Uh, Yeheni, Nantuko Husk, Tesa Orzov, uh, Scion. Um, now, these creatures, they're either going to create other tokens, or they're just going to get a lot bigger and be able to swing in and do some damage. Now, some we have some additional... Um, sack outlets and those are the ones that create uh tokens we have the likes of the hunted witness the doom traveler imperious oligarch with the afterlife mechanic um orzov enforcer uh minister of obligation hollowed spirit keeper um whenever these creatures die we're going to get additional spirit tokens uh, you can see those right up here but those are just going to be enable us to sack those again and get continued value off of these cards now another thing to note is that once these are in the graveyard we can use soren's minus ability to bring them back and do this again now, just on um, flavor with the spirit tokens, we are running a Lingering Souls just to kind of get some additional sack targets out. Um, it has flashback. It fits um, in this color pie. I felt like this was a, a decent addition. But guys, since we're going to be running some tokens, why wouldn't we run Anointed Procession? Now, it, it just gives us additional tokens every time we create one. I think this is a really easy addition to this deck since we have uh, seven or eight cards that are going to generate tokens. Um, and why wouldn't you want to just continue to create extra? Now, we have some creatures that have enter the battlefield effects like Merciless Executioner and Plague Crafter. They're both along a similar um, axis where each player has to sacrifice a creature, a uh, plague crafter even better, or a planeswalker. If they don't have one of those, they have to discard a card. Um, the other creature we run that has entered the battlefield is Tide Hollow Sculler, and this kind of just gives us some access to our opponent's hands if we feel that we need some disruption. Now, we have a couple other creatures that we are including in this deck, just kind of four bodies for sack targets, uh, and they just do some additional things. Uh, Tithe Taker has some taxing effects. He also has the afterlife mechanic for a token. Knight of Infamy has pro-white uh, and the exalted. 
Um, but now we have all these sack targets, um, but where are we going to start seeing the payoff? Now, the first we have creatures like Zelleport Cutthroat and Cruel Celebrant, um, where whenever another creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life and we gain one life. So we're going to be gaining a lot of life with this deck, with all the tokens, uh, with the recurred creatures through Soren. Um, so we want to just milk our opponent's life totals down all at once. The Blood Artist does the same, but it's actually uh, whenever another creature dies. It doesn't have to be just our creatures. Um, so this makes it really, really powerful. Um, now we also have the Grim Har Haruplex and the Midnight Reaper um, for some card draw. So whenever we sack a creature, uh, we get to, to draw a card. Dark Prophecy does this on a similar axis. Um, but it's more of an enchantment. Now, you better believe we're running Athreos, the god of passage. So whenever a creature we control dies, we get to return it to our hand unless target opponent is willing to pay three life. Um, I've not found that they're willing to do this, so we're just going to get creatures back really quickly. Just keep re recasting them. The deck has a fairly low mana curve, um, as is. Um... But guys, the next package is actually kind of one of the win cons for the decks, and it's going to start with Grave Pact. Now, an enchantment for one black, 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 whenever a creature you control is put into a graveyard from battlefield, each other player sacrifices a creature. Now, we're going to be doing this continuously, generating value off of the sacrifices, and our opponents are going to end up with an empty board state. So that does give us, you know, kind of an opportunity to attack their life totals just with creatures. Um, now this pairs extremely well with Black Market, an enchantment for three black black that whenever a creature dies, put a charge counter on Black Market. So every time we sack a creature, we're getting four activations here, one for our creature and then one from each of our opponents. So you can see how this is going to add up extremely fast. If we're able to get this to 12, uh, 15 really quickly, we're going to be sitting on loads of mana on our next turn and we can either cast, uh, you know, cast out of our hand or we can just cast an Exsanguinate. And this is going to be one of the, the minor win cons of the deck. Um, Exsanguinate, a sorcery for X black black, each opponent loses X life, we gain X life equal to the life lost this way. So it's really a way to kind of end the game pretty quickly um, through all of the other damage that we're going to be doing from the the sacking. Um, Exsanguinate on 12 can probably just end the game. Um, to get some additional mana, we're also running the Crypt Gas, so once he's out, each time we tap a Swamp for mana, we get to add an additional black. Um, then we also do have a little bit of targeted removal, and that's with Swords to Plowshare and Mortify. Now guys, that's going to be it for this Oathbreaker deck tech. If you guys have any questions or videos you'd like to see, in the future make sure to leave a comment down below and i'll do my best to make my way through them as fast as possible again you do not want to miss out on the versus series return uh or the battle series return next week but guys i will catch you all later